The title of the panel is Surveillance and Secrets, and I'm just going to briefly introduce each of these terrific writers and then ask them to um, speak about their own books for a few minutes, and then we'll have a discussion, and then I'll throw it open to you guys fairly early on, because I think there are going to be a ton of questions um, about these subjects, which touch all of us very sort of um, immediately. So down the end there, um, we have Laurie Andrews. And um, she is a professor of law at, um, Illinois, at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Uh, she's been a visiting professor at Princeton. And she's an expert on um, biotechnologies, the author of The Clone Age, and much of what she's written has been um, about the legal implications of genetic science and, and research. Um, but her new book, I Know Who You Are and Saw What You Did, um, <laughs> is it's a, great title. a very scary read about the information that we give away about ourselves without even thinking about it um, every time we go on the internet or log on to Facebook or even just go to a website and um, not even buy something but research something and um, it really does feel like my wife said to me when she saw me reading it the other night, you know, is it as bad as I think in terms of what they found out about us? I said, it seems to be way, way worse <laughs> than you can imagine. Um, and sitting next to Laurie is Michael Shermer, whose new book is called The Believing Brain, um, which is, is basically a study of um, how we come to believe some of the things we do believe and how those beliefs mutate. And Michael's a, um, a specialist in crazy thinking. Um, <laughs> he, he took a, a degree in psychology, um, a detail I, I didn't know until I just read about this this morning. He was a competitive cyclist and even has a medical ailment named after him, <laughs> and um, he's the editor and <laughs> creator of The Skeptic magazine and um, the author of many books, and I know because I've been on a panel with him before, uh, is one of the most brilliant and entertaining panelists I've ever encountered in all the time I've been doing this, so Michael, that's something for you to live up to. Um, <laughs> and here we have Annie Jacobson, whose first book is a, an epic piece of research about Area 51, um, that huge piece of Edwards Air Force Base up in the Nevada desert that the government still, I think, sometimes tries to say doesn't even exist, um, where the above ground nuclear testings were going on through the 40s and 50s, and where ver various um, high-tech surveillance jets, the, the stealth bomber before that, the, the Blackbird was developed there, right? And, um, of course, it's the sort of the locus in popular mythology of um, the place where the aliens were taken by the government when they landed in the late 1940s. So if we all remember the, the film uh, Independence Day, the nasty creatures that come from the spaceship, uh, they're being probed and investigated in what presumably is Area 51, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, I'll just ask each in turn to talk about their book a little bit, and um, starting with you, Laurie. So what did you reveal about yourself in the past 24 hours online? Mm. Did you post drunken pictures from last night? <laughs> did you like a certain author you saw yesterday? 
Did you apply for a job that your current employer doesn't know about? Uh, well, amazingly, everything that we're doing on the web is being tracked by data aggregators in one form or another. And you know, and sometimes it's to give us ads, tell us where our favorite band is playing or money off at a store. In other times, it may be used to disadvantage you. So um, Google routinely searches Gmail to craft ads. And so if I email a friend through Gmail and say, I'm thinking of getting a divorce, they have that information about me. Or if I Google search a medical condition, they have that information. Or if I um, search for old guitars to buy. Well, it turns out if I've done that, and then I go to a credit card website, they will use that information. And if, I'm, if they think I'm about to get divorced or I'm in a band, and we know that divorcees and members of you know, garage rock bands are more likely to renege on their credit cards, they actually offer me a lower limit without giving me the chance to uh, correct that. And so in my book, I look at how that's occurring and what we can do about it. And it's the 225th anniversary of the US Constitution. And so I bring up issues about why is it that our offline rights are more protective than our online rights? And what would we need online to protect privacy and freedom of association and a right to a fair trial? Because some jurors are now actually posting the facts of the case on Facebook, in one case a criminal case, and asking their friends to vote up or down about whether they should fry the guy. Um, so those are some of the things I talk about in my book. Michael? So, um, well, my book's based on what I do for a living, which is published Skeptic Magazine. It's a science-based magazine here in Southern California. We investigate uh, claims of the paranormal, pseudoscience, fringe groups, and cults, and claims of all kinds between good science, junk science, bad science, voodoo science, pathological science, non-science, and plain old nonsense. And unless you've been abducted by aliens and been in Area 51 for the past few decades, you know there's a lot of it out there, nonsense that is. And some people call us debunkers, but let's face it, there's a lot of bunk. And it's our job to debunk it. And, uh, and more importantly, though, I think it's trying to understand why people believe those things, uh, weird things. So the, the, the short answer why people believe weird things uh, is because we have to believe things and weird things are a subset of things, and we're not really good at discriminating between correct things and weird things or incorrect things. So as a matter of course, then, the whole uh, cluster of cognitive biases that help reinforce our beliefs as truths uh, turn out to be very powerful, and that we're not very objective, uh, rational reasoners. We are not the embodiment of the enlightenment idea of a rationally calculating human being. Uh, we're not like that at all. So the reason we need science is because, uh, as flawed as it may be, it is still the best system we have for uh, getting at what uh, we think is real uh, in terms of not just what I think, but what you can go out and check also. And you can run the experiment in the same way. And you can check the data as well as I can check the data. And I might be biased, and you might be biased, but there's some other lab that will gain a value in debunking our silly ideas. So the competitive nature of science, I think, is what gives us confidence that there's, there's some hope for figuring out the way the world actually is. Now, on the surveillance, secrets and surveillance topic, I guess the closest in my book would be my chapter on conspiracy theories. Um, the reason, in part, that they exist is because there are secrets. And governments do conspire to do all sorts of things, not just governments, everybody. Whenever two or more people get together to talk about what they're going to do to you uh, without you knowing about it, that's you know, technically, by definition, a conspiracy. And that happens all the time. So it's not unusual or unreasonable to be suspicious and, and cautious, skeptical uh, in, in thinking there might be people conspiring against you. The problem is, is how do we know which conspiracies are true and which aren't, because most aren't. Conspiracy theories are not true, uh, but some are. Lincoln was assassinated by a conspiracy. Uh, there was a whole conspiracy to assassinate, to decapitate the entire Lincoln cabinet, uh, and all of them failed except the one. Uh, and uh, Watergate was a conspiracy. But, but here's a clue that the most powerful administration in, uh, on the planet couldn't even break into a hotel room. So 
so the idea that they could they could like run a world economy like the Illuminati, these twelve guys in London, running the economy and doing a crappy job of it, uh, you know, is so so I sort of go through a little uh, sort of baloney detection kit version of conspiracy detection kit. That is, the more people that are involved, the less likely to, the theory is to be true, because for two reasons: one, most people are incompetent, and two, most people. Can